Welcome back. Another school year is here, and as children head back to the classroom, it's important to talk about how to keep them healthy. Well, one concern for parents is always head lice. Oh, just saying the word makes your head scratch a little bit. Well, joining us this morning from Gunderson Health System is pediatrician Kelly Howell. Thank you so much for joining us. And she's going to tell us more about what to look for. And Kelly, first of all, when your parent, you know, when the parents are looking over their kids, what should they be looking for? So the most important thing with diagnosing a case of head lice is to find the live bugs. Um, it's not that uncommon to have some nits without an active infestation, um, but it's also important to look for the little nits. Um, they're little white bits that are um, adhered to the hair shaft close to the scalp. Um, and they can be difficult to find. So um, if you have a suspicion that your child may have lice, such as a child in their classroom was diagnosed with it, um, you really should sit next to a bright window and get a fine tooth comb and go through the hair very carefully looking for both of those things. And so, you know, lice has their three different stages, knit, nymph, and then the actual adult lice. Uh, and so you had said that one is harder to decipher from the others. What should they specifically, what do they look like? Um, an actual louse is about the size of a sesame seed, um, and they can be a little bit difficult to find. They can, um, um, be, they can blend in with the color of the hair. So having a bright light to see the movement of something moving in the hair is probably one of the more helpful things to look for. Um, and if you have any question, you can always make an appointment with your health care provider and they can help you determine if what you're seeing is actually a uh, lice infestation or something different. And how easily do lice spread? Lice only spread by direct head-to-head -head contact. Um, they don't live on um, objects off of the scalp for more than a few hours. So um, if the child doesn't have direct contact with another child's head, then they won't be able to get the lice. They don't actually jump um, distances like a lot of people um, talk about. So um, the head-to-head -head contact, especially at times like sleepovers when kids are really close together, is usually when um, head lice um, spreads from one person to another. And then also, if your child does have it, what are the precautions that you have to take at home to clean and, and things like that to get rid of lice? The most important thing is to do the treatment of the child themselves. Um, but after doing that, um, it's good to clean the clothing and linens that the child has contacted in the past couple of days. Um, anything longer ago than that, the lice should be dead by now because they only live for a day or two. Um, but vacuuming, washing clothes and linens in hot water and drying on high heat, or putting things like stuffed animals that you can't put in a washer, put them in a plastic bag and seal them for two weeks, um, that should kill off anything that is living. Well, thank you so much. We are out of time this morning. Kelly, have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. And also just to note, you know, according to WebMD Online, lice costs an estimated $1 billion per year in the U.S. So keep your kids safe. And stay with us. Alex is the next with another forecast update.